So you were talking about Dirac. Yes, I was talking about Dirac, right. So Dirac was trying to now combine this uh, Schrodinger's equations which, which was described in the context of, you know, trying to talk about how these probabilistic waves of electrons move for the atom, which was good for, for speeds which were not too close to the speed of light, to what happens when you get to the near the speed of light. So then you need relativity. So then Dirac tried to combine Einstein's relativity with quantum mechanics. So he tried to combine them and uh, he wrote this beautiful equation, the Dirac equation, which roughly speaking, take the square root of, of the Einstein's equation in order to connect it to Schrodinger's time evolution operator, which is first order in time derivative, to get rid of the, the naive thing that Einstein's equation would have given, which is second order. So you have to take a square root. Now, square root usually has a plus or minus sign when you take it. And when he did this, he originally didn't notice this, plus, didn't pay attention to this plus or minus sign, but later physicists pointed out to Dirac, says, look, there's also this minus sign. And if you use this minus sign, you get negative energy. In fact, uh, it was very, very annoying that you know somebody else tells you this obvious mistake you make. Pauli, famous physicist, told Dirac, this is nonsense. You're going to get negative energy with your equation, which negative energy without any bottom. You can go all the way down to negative <clears throat> infinite energy. So it doesn't make any sense. Dirac thought about it, and then he remembered Pauli's exclusion principle. Before, just before him, Pauli had said, you know, there's this principle called the exclusion principle that, you know, two, or two electrons cannot be on the same orbit. Mm -hmm. And so Dirac said, okay, you know what? All these negative energy states are filled orbits, occupied. So according to you, uh, uh, Mr. Pauli, uh, there's no, no place to go. So therefore they only have to go positive. Sounded like a big cheat. <laughs> and then Pauli said, oh, you know what? We can change orbits from one orbit to another. What if I take one of these negative energy orbits and put it up there? Then it seems to be a new particle, which has opposite properties to the electron. It has positive energy, but it has positive charge. Mm -hmm. What is that? Uh, Dirac was a bit worried. He said, maybe that's proton because proton has plus charge. He wasn't sure. But then he said, oh, maybe it's proton. But then they said, no, 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 no. It has the same mass as the electron. It cannot be proton because yeah. proton is heavier. Dirac was stuck. He says, well, then may, may, maybe another part we haven't seen. By that time, Dirac himself was getting a little bit uh, worried about his own equation <laughs> and his own crazy interpretation. Yes. Until a few years later, Anderson, in photographic cosmic, uh, in the photographic place that he had gotten from these cosmic rays, he discovered a, a particle which goes in the opposite direction that the electron goes when there's a magnetic field and with the same mass, exactly like what Dirac had predicted. And this was what we call now positron. And in fact, beginning with the work of Dirac, we know that every particle has an antiparticle. And so this idea that there's an antiparticle came from this simple math, you know, there's a plus and a minus from the Dirac's quote unquote mistake. So again, trying to combine ideas, sometimes the math is smarter than the person who uses it to ap apply it, and you try to resist it, and then you, you're kind of confronted by criticism, which is the way it should be. So physicist comes and says, no, no, that's wrong, and you correct it, and so on. So that is a development of the idea there's particle, there's antiparticle, and so on. So this is the beginning of development of quantum mechanics and the connection with relativity, but the thing was more challenging because we had to also describe how electric and magnetic fields work with quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. This was much more complicated because it's not just one point. Electric and magnetic fields were everywhere. So you had to talk about fluctuating and a fuzziness of electrical field and magnetic fields everywhere. And the math for that was, was, was very difficult to deal with. And this led to a subject called quantum field theory. Fields like electric and magnetic fields had to be quantum, had to be described also in a wavy way. Feynman in particular was one of the uh, pioneers and along with Schwingers and others to try to come up with a formalism to deal with fields like electric and magnetic fields interacting with electrons in a consistent quantum fashion. And they dis developed this beautiful theory, quantum electrodynamics from that. And later on that same formalism, quantum field theory led to the discovery of other forces and other particles, all consistent with the idea of quantum mechanics. So that was how uh, physics progressed. And so basically we learned that all particles and all the forces uh, are, are in some sense related to particle exchanges. And so for example, electromagnetic forces are 
are mediated by a particle we call photon mm -hmm. and uh, and so forth. And the same for other forces that they discovered, strong forces and the weak forces. So, so we got the sense of what quantum field theory is. Is that a big leap of, uh, of an idea that uh, particles are fluctuations in a field? Like uh, the idea that everything is a field. Is, is the old Einstein light is a wave, both a particle and a wave kind of idea. Is that, is that a huge leap? in our understanding of conceiving the universe's fields? I would say so. I would say that on viewing the particles, this duality that Bohr mentioned between particles and waves, that waves can behave sometimes like particles, sometimes like waves, is one of the biggest uh, leaps of uh, imagination that quantum mechanics made physics do. So I, I agree that that is quite remarkable.